The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore... None of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I kind of heard a little gasp at the end of that gospel lesson over there. (laughs) Oh my goodness, what a tough one. Here we are, you know, some of you have known the joy of sitting in a pew that's filled with your children and grandchildren and saying, isn't this wonderful? And now Jesus says, hate your father, hate your mother, hate your children. It's like, what in the world is going on here? Well, let's go back. We need to go back about 2,000 years, okay? You've been hearing Jesus preach. You've been hearing stories about Jesus. You are ready to follow Jesus and be a disciple of Jesus. And you're so excited about Jesus. And every week when you go to the synagogue with your family and an Old Testament lesson is read and it kind of sounds like Jesus, you shout out, Jesus is Lord, the most basic Christian creed there is. And they finally tell you to be quiet or be gone and you will be kicked out of the synagogue for so doing. And in that culture, you will bring shame upon your parents. And in fact, the shame is so bad that your parents are expected to disown you and consider you dead. So Jesus is saying, if you're going to follow me, you need to be aware. It might even jeopardize the respect in relationships within your own family. Wow. This lesson goes with all the other ones today. I don't know if you noticed, but every lesson is about making a choice. It's about making a choice. We started with Moses. He's got him at the edge of the promised land. He says, there's two paths out there. Stick with God or go with the Canaanites. Choose life or choose death yours. The lesson from Paul to Philemon, that letter, I just, oh, Paul is like, go home and read this one again. He's a master at writing this letter. Do you understand what's going on? Onesimus is a runaway slave, and he ran away to where Paul is in prison, and is hanging out with Paul. And Paul sends him back to his master, carrying the letter that basically says, I'm sending him back. It's right and proper. However, he's your brother in Christ. I appeal to you out of love. 
to accept him as that, to forgive him, and if not, I pay the price. Wow. Philemon has a choice. Forgiveness and acceptance or to see someone as property and reject. But the best image is Psalm 1, which we just did. I love Psalm 1. Psalm 1 gives you a choice of being a tree or being a stalk of wheat. There's a big difference. A stalk of wheat lives for one season, dries up, it's over, done. A tree, especially a tree by the water, puts down deep roots. And even in times of drought, those roots can reach the deepest water that's still available, and the tree can flourish. That image is lifted up as those who dwell together in community and, and dwell together in God's word and share with one another. The roots go deeper and deeper. That's the appeal of Psalm 1. I love that image. Not just because we're kicking off a season of creation with Christians around the world for this next month. Not because there's apple trees in abundance this year and we're celebrating that in our town. It's that image of the tree and the strength that comes. You see, when we put down roots in the best of times, then when the worst of time hits, we survive. For the wheat, winter is the end and death. For the tree, winter always holds the promise of spring around the corner and a continuation of life. African Americans who were enslaved took words from Psalm 1 and, and made a song. I want you to learn it right, right now. The choir's going to just teach us a little song. We'll see how we do. Get the words up there. It's called, I Shall Not Be Moved. You may have heard this. It has so many different incarnations, which we'll talk about in a minute. But right now, I just want to make sure you know the song. Thank you, choir. find this in different versions and the verses are different in all of them but each verse is something about about the relationship with Jesus and just putting down you can just feel those roots being put down with each verse as you sing it and about the strength and confidence and hope and courage that it gives in the midst of adversity but the song changed over time it went from an I song I shall not be moved to a we song, we shall not be moved. As the song was echoed in later years by the descendants of slaves as a civil rights song. So the refrain becomes, we shall, we shall not be moved. And the verses are things like black and white together, we shall not be moved. 
black and white together, we shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. And over the decades, more and more verses grew on this as to who this we is. Very much reflective of St. Paul and Christ, there's no Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. That kind, of, that kind of song as it grows in this unity. And it makes me think of that image of faith as a shield. I don't know if you've ever heard this in a sermon, but faith as a shield is often listed in, in the scripture. And they say that the Roman shields for their army were built, that they had these beveled edges that you and I could hook our shields together and we could build a wall. We could build a protection together and stand stronger. If you listen to versions of this song from Psalm 1, sung during the civil rights marches, you definitely get the feel of standing together against dogs and fire hoses and even guns. We shall not be moved. Well, the verses continue to be written. Um, Male and female together, men and women together, we shall not be moved. Men and women together, we shall not be moved. But every time a new verse comes, you know, we kind of struggle to learn it. We struggle to learn it. Women eventually got to vote in the 20s. In the 1970s, in the Lutheran church, women could serve as pastors. As we're learning to sing that verse, you realize the first female pastor at Grace when she got here? This year, right? <laughs> right? And do you realize the call committee out of the 10 people they interviewed, five were female? Do you realize that? We wouldn't have sung this song so well 20 years ago, but we sing that verse really well together now. Old and young together, we shall not be moved. Can we sing that one? Last Sunday, little Charlie was in the back trying to find his church voice. <laughs> Remember? And another day and another time, everybody would have turned around and glared. Shh! <laughs> Get out of here. Instead, I saw smiles. It was like, oh, the beautiful sound of a child trying to find his church voice. And you'll get to celebrate his baptism in three weeks at this service. Amen. What other verses can we sing? 17 years ago, this congregation started writing a new verse. Anglo and Latino together, we shall not be moved. Anglo and Latino together, we shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Do you see what happens? All these groups that our society tries to draw a line and split us into these groups, these camps, Jesus is about pulling together and then our community becomes stronger, and our own faith walk has far more hope and strength in it as well. There are still tough verses that are being written, and verses we, string, we struggle to sing. In the late 70s, gay and straight together, we shall not be moved. Gay and straight together, we shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. And as you know, since 2009 in the Lutheran Church and more recently in the Methodist Church and other denominations, there's divisiveness over learning a new verse and how that plays out. And see, we're right back to that gospel again. When you start to get into this radical grace of Jesus, there is a divisiveness that begins and sometimes not just within relational families, but church families. Our Lord is a Lord who gathers together and strengthens us together, one another, so that we might be like a tree standing by the water, both in this place and in the community in which we serve. There's an interesting image about a tree. I don't know if you've ever seen an a, a image of a tree where it shows you all the branches and it shows you all the roots. And what you'll notice when you see that image, it's almost a, a good healthy tree is a mere image of, of it. That the roots and the limbs 
look the same. And when they're out of balance, the tree is not healthy. Someone said even when they transplant trees in their yard, once they've gotten the root ball out of the ground, they take a look at it and trim the branches to match the root ball and that the tree will survive better. The church is that way. It is about putting out branches, reaching out to our neighbor, reaching out, but it's also about putting down roots and digging deeper into what God provides us. And the balance of those two are what keep us healthy. I know last week we voted by secret ballot, so all of our votes are secret, but since the results are unanimous, I think you know how I voted. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that appeals to me about Pastor Jonathan, we don't know what's ahead for us as a congregation the next decade, but I do sense in that man an understanding that he needs to shepherd us in putting down roots and spreading out branches at the same time. And I pray that for us, that, that we can do that and be effective at doing it. But again, as we write more verses to this hymn, as we, as we expand the boundaries of God's church, God's kingdom, as we do that together, know that there will be pushback. Know that there will be problems. See, it'd be so nice if Jesus just said, be my disciple and everything will be great and hunky-dory and wonderful. But instead, no, Jesus is like the whitewater rafting company. That I'm in my bathing suit, I got my life jacket on, I'm all ready to go have fun, and they make me sign this document <laughs> that says I could lose an eye, a limb, my life, or anything. And I realize what I'm about to get into. Jesus has a huge crowd following him in the gospel. And he says, okay, folks, I know you're excited about this, but let me bring out the waiver. <laughs> There's going to be pushback in the world. But know that I'm with you. Together, we shall not be moved. So this morning, let's put down our roots. Eat drink deeply, open ourselves up to the work of the Spirit, that we might be stronger, that we might be stronger together. We don't know what winter is going to bring us, but spring will follow, for we, in Christ, shall not be moved. Amen.